So um, I'm going to do a little talk about uh, my experience uh, color grading on Alexa footage. So I'm a freelance colorist. I do mainly DI grades, uh, most of all feature films. So um, in that sense, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, color grading on Alexa material, but I also, in a way, would like to touch a bit uh, the integration between on-set viewing, editing, what do directors, editors look at in an editing suite, and then the final color grading, because I think these days in, well, let's say in digital cinematography, in a way we might have lost what we used to know as dailies. And that creates also a lot of uh, confusion. Okay. But first, I would like to talk, I mean, the experiences I had with most of the, direct, most of the DOPs I worked with are most of all quite similar. A lot of my, my, my clients, and when I'm talking about clients, I'm actually talking about the DOPs I work with. Let's say they're a, they're a healthy mix between people who have always worked on film, 35 mil, 16 mil, and people who maybe from the beginning on have always worked on digital cameras. What I've actually noticed is that both of these categories seem very much to appreciate what comes out of the Alexa camera. Let's say that the film people, they most of the time are quite convinced when they look at the material you get a Loxy image out of the camera that in a way looks very similar to a film scan. Of course, they never look at film scans, so when they see it on the set, it's very strange. But once you get into a post-production environment and you apply a film lookup table, basically, they see what they tend to see also on film. Suddenly, even without a color grading, you get like something that is quite similar to a one light print and that for me as a colorist is a huge difference between what comes out of the Alexa and what comes out of other cameras is in a lot of other cameras maybe things that work more with a hypergamma kind of system you tend to once you apply a film look up table you tend to stretch the gamma curve in order to get details out of the blacks, details out of the whites. So in a way, most other cameras, you can't just apply a film lookup table and say, well, this is a nice picture that we could grade even with a normal film style grading. Another thing that basically everybody, even a lot of the non-believers who swore to me that they would never abandon 35 mil are quite amazed by is the fact that the latitude also I, for them also the latitude resembles that what they see on film so for instance I just did a, a trailer for a for a film I'll show that to you later uh, with the DP who basically he's never shot digital producers present Alexa to him and he's very open to it because the film he's shooting might be the good project to, to go digital on. But of course his first question is, Peter, what am I going to do? I've never done this. I, I, I'm used to using my light meter, measuring, I put a stop and that's it. And the funny thing with, with the Alexa, when we, when we started to do key light tests and all the tests in, 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 in the entire chain, is that also in the key light test, he sees a response that is quite similar to what he gets from a 35 millimeter negative. A minus one underexposed, you can make it a zero. A minus two, you can make it a zero kind of pulling. Minus three, well, it starts to be very difficult from there. But at the least, he sees detail. And he sees detail he's actually never seen in a lot of other digital cameras. And Let's say the little plus with the Alexa is that you even see detail maybe a lot lower than you have on 35mm 
might be because of the fact that you don't have the big apparent grain that really screws you over. But it's quite interesting. Same with overexposure, where with a lot of other digital cameras, maybe on a skin overexposed, you have a plus two, and then it starts to become very, very digital once you try to lower it again. On the Alexa, well, plus three and a half. I mean, I would dare to do it. I mean, so that's quite amazing. So when my friend DOP saw that, he was like, oh, this is not uninteresting, actually. And then another thing, apart from, of course, the latitude he has, he's, he still has that question, well, OK, I've got an onset monitor, and I've got a waveform, and how am I going to expose? So even the second day, I'm, I'm going to be honest, even the second day of shooting, he calls me and says, I'm, I'm really confused, man. I see something on my waveform. I see something on my, on my monitor. And I say, you know, take your light meter. It's 800 ASA film stock. You can push it to 1600. You do whatever you always do, and you get a great, you get great material out of it. He did the entire shoot like that, and basically that's what I tell to all the film style people these days. And they're pretty amazed by it. It, it actually works. So that, of course, is not only a plus for the DOP, but of course also for me. Well, I'm actually a bit late with my page, sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, just, just to kind of stress that, as I said, I think it's very important that, in a way, they don't have to fuss with gamma settings and stuff like that, which, which most of the time confuses the people who are not very technical. I mean, you've got a, you've got a lot of DOPs who make beautiful images. They are, they are, in a way, technical, but they're used to something else being filmed. So, it might sound a bit lame, but the advantages for us as colorists are we don't need to reinvent the image. The, the image itself already exists. Once we apply a film lookup table, we can decide. I mean, there are still people who want to shoot Alexa, but still want it to look very traditional. There is no problem with that. You apply a film lookup table, and you can do a print style grade with printer lights, a bit of contrast, and it will look good. It will look very good. If needed, on the other hand, we can pull the signal far. I mean, with all of the tests I've done, you can pull it very far. You can key on it. You can basically do a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't have a lot of trailers with me today. <laughs> But I saw um, the trailer of Cochon de Gaza. Uh, it's playing on the other side of the screen. I can tell you, that was my first film with Alexa. I was confronted with a DP who wanted to go light, lighter, lighter. And I was thinking, oh my god, we are breaking this material. But you can really open it up. It's amazing. It really is amazing. One of the other things I, that, that I really want to stress is, I, I mean, this is like a very, very, very basic overview, but <clears throat> as I said, when it comes to calibration within a chain, also as colorists, of course, we are very affected by that. So in a traditional film chain, what you actually have is people will first shoot film, you have development and dailies, edit, scan, conform, grade, and output. In a traditional digital chain, people will shoot, they will load their footage, then go and edit, conform, grade, output. What we actually miss here is the dailies. I mean, sorry, quickly. What for me, I mean, I, I started out, I mean, I'm young, but I started out a while ago. <laughs> um, when I started doing features, I came, I used to be a telecine style colorist and I went into the eye. But because of that, 
I think from the beginning, I've always had a good integration between my DOPs and myself from the point of filming on. Meaning that, especially in the first years when I did DI grades, I used to always do all the dailies for the DOPs I worked with every day. And what, what is quite important for me with the dailies grade is that it establishes a communication between a DOP and a colorist. You already test what you can do with the footage. You already try to work around the look. Sometimes can be wrong. That's always also interesting. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Then you already know it when you start grading. But what I always liked about the dailies grade and what we're kind of started missing with digital cinematography is the fact that the colorist or maybe an assistant that was briefed by a colorist created a look that the DOP asked for, at least made sure that in the edits, the editor and director, they would edit for months on something that showed a certain respect for the work of the DOP. Third of all, it created a technical check, which of, of course also is quite interesting. But especially that thing that you create already in the dailies and in the edits, people are working on something that is not just something. So with, I, it, it's, not, it's not bullshit. You create a color grading that the DP can already live with, he can try and test stuff. What happens with, in, in typical digital chains is material is loaded into an Avid or a Final Cut Pro and then they will say, well, this looks gray or whatever and you'll have an editing assistant who puts contrast and maybe a bit of color in it and then later on the editor will start grading a bit because it doesn't really look nice. But in that there is no communication quite often with the DOP. So what I <clears throat> like right, right now with the Alexa is that because you have the Lux C material, and let's jump quickly to, and right now that Ari has uh, released the Ari Look Creator, you actually get the chance to give to a DOP a pre-grade for him to look at on the on-set monitors and if he wants on the electronic viewfinder. I mean, at the least he's not looking at the flat stuff. And I think one of the advantages of the look creator right now is that you can give him a couple of looks. I mean, I've done that with some DOPs. We did that before the look creator, but it was a lot more difficult to do that. <laughs> but you give to a DOP, you, you say, well, I can, I give you a setting for day exteriors, I give you a setting for, for night exteriors, and I give you a setting for interiors, maybe day, night, or special things. It's quite easy to create these little looks. Right now, they can easily load them onto the camera. And this is what I think is really great. The looks that are created, uh, that are applied in the camera, they travel as metadata on the QuickTime, and they can be converted to lookup tables that can be used to create, in a very simple way, a new kind of dailies. I mean, yeah, Look Creator is quite new. Um, so I've, I've actually started playing around with it uh, in the last uh, two weeks. But I already have one production going on right now that's a TV series. And they're shooting, they're apply they have like five looks. Whenever they get to a, to a, to a scene, they want an, a different look, they just drop me an email, I can give them a new look in five minutes. They can apply it to the camera. When it comes into editing, they can apply, they can convert them to lookup tables and they can actually see what the cameraman has wanted to do on that special scene. And at the least, the director of that TV series is not going to edit on something that looks completely different than what the DOP wanted.